Jumbo. It's a Swahili word for hello. Thank you very much to the organizers of the conference for inviting me as a speaker to this conference. Thank you everyone who is tuned in to my talk this afternoon from every corner of the world. My talk today is about envisioning an end to poverty and hunger for women in Africa. And I'm Esther Ngumbi. Let me begin by saying it is unlikely that anyone in this room has ever lost a child to hunger and diseases that go with it. Similarly, it is unlikely that anyone who is tuned into my talk this afternoon has had to miss multiple meals and still go to bed not knowing where the next meal will come from. But one thing I know is that we share one world and our lives and our future are one as well. My goal, my dream, my hope is that I educate, I inspire and motivate people to rise up and work together to make a difference to the people who are affected by hunger and extreme poverty. So let me begin my talk today by laying out the challenge that lies before us. Feeding a growing population. Currently, the population is at 7 billion. This number is expected to continue rising. Global population is expected to reach 8.3 and 10.9 billion by 2050. The other challenge is alleviating extreme hunger and poverty while protecting our environment. Left unchecked, these challenges will only worsen. Let's take a close look at hunger. The truth be known that in a world of abundance, it is becoming difficult to remind people of these facts that over 870 million people are chronically hungry. Over 239 million hungry people live in the sub-Saharan Africa. Every 3.2 seconds, someone somewhere is dying because of hunger. Out of 25,000 people dying every day, 18,000 are women and children. I'll pause for a moment and ask everyone in this room and everyone tuned into my talk this afternoon. Ask yourself, should hunger exist? Whichever way you look at it, I believe the answer is no. It is simply wrong. Whether you look at it from the religious point of view, from moral point of view, from social point of view, from political point of view, from economic point of view, it is just simply wrong. So let's take a look at what are the causes of hunger because to develop sustainable solutions we have to understand the root causes of hunger. First of all, it's poverty. Climate, conflict and natural disasters that disrupt food system, poor governance and corruption as well as high population growth. The most vulnerable of increasing hunger issue is women and children. Now let's talk about poverty in Africa. It is predominantly rural with over 70% of the continent's poor living in the rural areas. These people depend on agriculture for food and livelihood. Women make the majority of the poor. Therefore, there is a great need to focus on women farmers so as to raise productivity as well as reduce poverty. I would like to just zoom in to my community and talk about poverty. Extreme poverty and hunger continues to afflict many of my neighbors, even as I speak of now. For example, this is my neighbor. He's standing in what he calls home. He's a father of six. Every time I go home, I have to walk through many of homesteads that look like this. And as I walk home, I'm reminded of the big task that lies ahead of my way, the task of helping my community and many other communities in Africa to rise out from poverty. Once again, I would like to say 
Left unchecked, these challenges will only perpetuate hunger, slow economic growth, spur political instability, and threaten irreversible damage to the environment and human survival. Therefore, there is an urgent need to find sustainable solutions to end extreme hunger and poverty. Our time is now. If you ask me, what are some of the solutions that I think are key to ending poverty and hunger? I would once again say agriculture, and I would repeat it again, agriculture, agriculture. History has proven that agricultural development is an effective way of remedying food security challenges. Done properly, agricultural development increases production, improves nutrition, protects our environment, and raises incomes among the world's hungriest people. Agricultural development drives economic development and reduces poverty. And it is important that we develop agriculture that is focused on women. But why women? Women farmers make up to 43% of the agricultural labor force in developing countries. And according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, empowering women farmers can reduce the number of hungry people in our world today by 100 to 150 million. Investing in women provides a strong link between agriculture and, and nutrition. And this is because these women farmers are the same women involved in food production. Therefore, we have to focus on women and women farmers. And so I am going to share about my vision. How do I envision an end to poverty and hunger, especially for the women in Africa? And I will begin to talk about the journey, how my vision was born. Around 2003 to 2005, I was a visiting student or scholar at the Agricultural Research Organization in Israel. During my two years of stay, I witnessed agriculture at its first degree. I witnessed greenhouse technologies. I witnessed green drip irrigation, integrated pest management. And it was at this point that all the knowledge that I gained in Israel gave birth to a vision. Let me take you through my vision. Just close your eyes and imagine an entire 1,000 hectares filled with greenhouses that are producing quality vegetables in the Kenyan coast. Imagine the Kenyan coast being the next hub where agriculture, greenhouse technology, entrepreneurship, and smart marketing intersecting to produce an everlasting change. Imagine the number of jobs that will be created Imagine the number of lives of poor women whose life would be changed forever. Imagine the much anticipated green revolution in Africa happening at the Kenyan coast. Yes, I totally believe that my imagination can be turned into reality because the Kenyan coast and many other African countries' agriculture potential is really underexplored. So my vision goals are, first of all, to have over a thousand hectares filled with operational greenhouses. And these greenhouses will be, cre will be producing multiple food crops, tomatoes, cucumbers, name it, to create employment opportunities for poor rural women farmers especially beginning with Kenya and the rest of Africa and many disengaged youth, to create opportunities for consistent production of vegetables and other highly nutritious food, to improve food security and the quality of life, and to help alleviate hunger and malnutrition, to provide outreach opportunities for other communities, and implement a sister project that I'm calling Pwani Women Sustainable Farming. I would love to say that in 2013, 
the vision has been realized, we first erected or constructed our first greenhouse. There it is. It is. And that's the picture of my family standing on the on front of the first greenhouses. Our first crops have been planted. But if Africa has to be fed, this vision must grow. So from that just single greenhouse, I anticipate that profits from that greenhouse will give birth to greenhouse number two. Greenhouse number two will give birth to greenhouse number four. From four, it will double to eight and will continue having a doubling effect until we have over a thousand operational greenhouses at the Kenyan coast. While the greenhouse project is growing, we anticipate to kick in another project that we are calling Pwani Women Sustainable Farming. And this one will include renting big pieces of land and employing women to work in these farms that are producing vegetables and what the crops that we decide to grow. This vision will continue repackaging agriculture so that it is productive, sustainable, nutritious and resilient to setbacks including climate change. I would like to say that as the vision grows, the vision must be conscious of our environment. And this is where I bring in controlling insect pests. I know, I'm an entomologist, that insects are a fact of life to be reckoned with. They pose a great risk to food security because they infest the crops that are grown. While majority of the insect pests are controlled by spraying pesticides, this practice is unsustainable. Pesticides usage has adverse effects to our environment and it leads to many problems including human poisonings, health risks, environmental hazards, and loss of biodiversity. Women who contribute to most food production while making up 67% of the labor force in developing countries are vulnerable to the risks associated with pesticide use. And this is where I would like to share with you the research that I have been engaged in at Auburn University. My research uh, over the years, including my PhD research, aimed at finding more sustainable ways of feeding the growing population by suggesting environmentally friendly ways of controlling pests. Among them is biological control that uses natural enemies of these insect pests. Biological control is sustainable, it is environmentally friendly, and with this, its ultimate goal is to establish a self-sustaining system. This research that I continue to do over the years is in line with the goals of the Alliance. Alliance for Women encourages us to find solutions that nature provides. And these parasitoids are natural pests, uh, natural enemies of the insect pest. So, my research, as I said, is focused on uh, looking at uh, these natural enemies, but for them to really be able to attack the insect pest, they have to locate this host. My research has, over the years, focused on understanding how these parasitoids locate their host, and how do they do it? As a plant is, uh, is being fed by a caterpillar, you see the plant produces volatiles and the parasitoids use the volatiles to locate the host. Success of these parasitoids in suppressing pest populations will depend on the ability to locate host in a complex, and complex visual as well as olfactory environment. Therefore, understanding mechanisms that guide the parasitoids in selecting and distinguishing different hosts is critical. Result, results from my research would first help us to understand how parasitoids locate their host and this knowledge would open avenues for improved pest management.
technology developed from attractants that are produced naturally by plants would help reduce the impact of pests that have a direct bearing on poverty, food production, and the well-being of the society. Once again, these technologies that I'm researching on are sustainable, environmentally friendly, and as such methods are implemented across Africa. There will be important benefits to women farmers who stand the, to face the health risks that come along with the usage of pesticides. Additionally, my research has focused on looking at other biological control agents. And I would like to bring to your attention uh, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, a project that I've really been working on and it's a fun project. So what are plant growth promoting rhizobacteria? These are naturally occurring bacteria. They're found in the soil. And what they do is they colonize the plant. And when they colonize, their, their colonization is associated with increased rate of plant growth. They help suppress naturally soil pathogens. And they also induce systemic resistance. So they naturally immunize the plant. So you can see in this in this uh, plant, soybean plants, you can see a big difference between the plants that have been treated with the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria as opposed to the plants that have not been treated. So there's a clear difference in the growth and these are natural, once again, natural bacteria that we are using. So I would love to point out that the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria represent products that are natural, that have the ability to promote plant growth and these products will be a useful resource to ensure that we grow crops that produce higher yields. Benefits of using plant growth promoting rhizobacteria make them a viable component of integrated pest management tactic. Additionally, with increasing concerns of using pesticides and the harmful effects pesticides have on our environment and the workers that are working on the, with these pesticides, and the rising interest of biological control agents, PGPR mediated agriculture is likely gain, going to gain more importance and acceptance worldwide. And I foresee especially developing countries adopting this technology because as, once again, as I said, these bacteria are naturally occurring in the soil. They have multiple benefits and they can help increase yields while um, repelling insect pest. I would like to say that as of 2013, the patent for this work was granted and uh, we foresee this work being used in several countries in Africa as well as in Central America and several other developing countries. So I would like to point out that while I've really mentioned the importance of agriculture and me seeing agriculture being a key, key, key area in helping uh, many women in Africa move out from poverty. I would like to point out again that agriculture cannot stand alone. The sustainable path out of poverty and hunger in Africa requires a holistic approach that integrates other key areas, including education, healthcare, clean water, and many other key areas. I therefore call upon everyone to use your intellect, use the resources, use what is in front of you, use your talents and help solve the problem. So I would like to say, first of all, an area that I see as important and I've continued to integrate it in my vision is education. Today I have a PhD and I know when you educate a girl, you educate an entire community. Education empowers, education liberates, education opens doors. Education is a powerful tool to overcome poverty. When I was growing up, I grew up in a poor family, but I always thought education was a good way for me to get out of poverty. And today I see the light at the end of the road. And in my community, we've started a school. It's called Fahulu Academy. And I foresee a future where these children get a quality education. They are able to realize the potential they, want, they have then they grow up, they become lawyers, they become the scientists, they, come, they become the teachers, and they come back to the community and they help me develop the vision further. So I value education and I've continued to promote education in my community. 
I would also like to mention about Universities Fighting World Hunger, which is an organization I've worked with for the past five years. And um, in partnership with the United Nations World Food Program, Universities Fighting World Hunger is a catalyst, mobilizing universities across the nation and around the globe to make fighting hunger a core value of higher education institutions worldwide. And I've continued to work with this organization to create awareness about the hunger problem. I've continued to tell the engineers, tell the doctors, the lawyers, the CEOs, the politicians, everybody around you, let them be aware of the reality of poverty and hunger. And more than ever, let them know that we all have a role we have something to offer, and yes, we can. My role in this organization has been to motivate, to inspire, and to move everyone into doing something to end hunger. Alongside other organizations that I've worked with is the Clinton Global University Initiative. President Clinton quote cannot be, I cannot stress the beauty of this world, that today's generation of young people holds more power than any generation before it to make a positive impact on the world. Clinton Global University Initiative engages the next generation of leaders on college campuses around the world to develop innovative solutions to pressing global challenges. Their five key areas and poverty alleviation is one of them. To be accepted, you have to make a commitment to action. In 2010, I proposed my first commitment to action, which was to start a sustainable farming project at my community. And as I said, as of 2013, the vision has been realized. We've started the first greenhouse, and we are only growing to implement and start many more greenhouses, as well as start the Puani Women's Sustainable Farming Project. Currently, I serve as a commitment mentor in the area of conservation and and um, ecology. I also believe in mentoring because the future and prosperity of our world depends on the skillful mentoring of each new generation by the one that precedes it. When I see the young people, I see a future and I've continued to help them realize that they have something useful in this world and I've continued to be there as a role model and as a mentor to them to make sure that they go on to realize their full potential. Because once again, as I said, once they realize their full potential, they will come back to the community, they will come back and join hands with me, and they will help us develop Africa and help our mothers uh, and many other women move out of poverty. I've continued to work on networking and uh, continue to engage myself and attend meetings that talk about agriculture. And I was privileged in 2012 to attend the Chicago Council on Global Affairs G8 meeting. And in this meeting, they were clearly focusing on agriculture, African agriculture. And uh, in this meeting, uh, G8 leaders, African presidents, renowned senior global leaders in agriculture were convened together to talk about food security, a topic that is dear to me. In attendance was President Barack Obama, the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and many African presidents. In the meeting, the emerging themes were that there is a big need to invest in agriculture and that development dollars that are spent in agriculture have the greatest impact on poverty reduction and they clearly stated the need to invest in women and that is why I've said women in Africa, we should all invest in them and make sure they, they have the tools, they have the, and the resources they need to farm productively. Again, once again, I was able to also attend the Chicago Council on Global Affairs meeting, 2013 meeting in DC. And at this meeting, the focus was on capitalizing on the power of science, trade, and business. And 
one of the emerging theme that I took away is that if future generations are to be fed, then innovation in agriculture must be ramped up. The world needs a new agenda for global security. And some of the emerging themes, again, that, uh, that I took away from the meeting was the need to capitalize on science to increase agricultural production, calling on all, every scientist out there, agricultural engineers, the ones who are working on other areas, we need to really utilize the power of science to increase productivity. There's also the need to reduce environmental impact and the need to disseminate agricultural innovations to women smallholder farmers. And finally, one of the programs that is dear to me is Spread Break Kenya. And in this program, all we are doing is galvanizing Kenyan, young Kenyan university students into service. And the motivation behind this program, it was remember the last famine that we had in Africa and the famine was at its peak and there were so many media pictures with many heart-wrenching pictures. These pictures prompted me to think, how can I engage the young African students beginning with Kenya, to really ask them to rise up and help create or craft sustainable solutions to ending hunger by just clearly asking them to be the change they want to see. And uh, I've seen young university students rise up to the challenge, uh, suggesting different innovative projects and going to the communities and transferring the knowledges that they're learning in the universities and bringing it back to the communities. And, and their main focus is agriculture. And this, this, uh, this uh, organization will only keep on growing and I am personally happy about it. So in conclusion, if the future generations are to be fed, we must pay attention to agriculture. I will say it again, if future generations are to be fed, we must pay attention to agriculture. We must continue to empower women farmers to maximize agricultural potential. Our time is now. We have the means, we have the capacity to end hunger from the face of the earth in our lifetime. We need only the will. I would love to end on a good note that the future of African agriculture is bright. Clearly, the future is bright. It is evident that hunger and poverty are about to become a story of the past. Let us make it happen. Join me and in my vision. And once again, I'll ask you to use the resources, use what is in front of you to help end hunger and poverty in Africa. Thank you. Thank you.